Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can get started using the new Gantt view in Asana. This is a really useful feature for visualizing when tasks, subtasks, and milestones fall due within your project. In the second part of this video, I'm then going to explain how the Gantt view is different from the timeline view, which is a feature we've had in Asana for a little while now. If you have any questions at the end of this video, feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or getting more out of your Asana account, maybe improving the adoption of Asana within your team, then click the link in the description below to learn more about my Asana consulting options. So firstly, what even is a Gantt chart and what is this Gantt view in Asana all about? Well, simply it's a very visual way of seeing when tasks and milestones fall due within your project. Now, typically when you set up a project, we usually do that either from the list view here where you can create tasks within various sections or you might be working in the board view where you can have tasks within columns. Now, you're gonna notice this Gantt view as an option up here as one of the tabs in your project or if you're not seeing this, you can add a tab and choose the Gantt option. You're then gonna see a visual representation of your tasks. And what's really useful about the Gantt view is I can uh, open and collapse entire sections of my projects and I can see when the tasks are due. So on the left, I can see all of my tasks. I can then click and expand to see when subtasks are due and I can see when milestones are due. So this is really useful for projects where you are working backwards from some kind of deadline. Maybe you're planning a product launch, a marketing campaign, an event where you need to get the project done before a certain date and the tasks need to be completed or need to happen in a certain order. The Gantt view is a really powerful way of seeing when different tasks start and finish, when different sections or phases of the project start and finish. And for those that are more visual planners, it's a really useful view to work from. To show you how to create and use the Gantt chart, let me walk you through this by creating a brand new project. I can do that by clicking create new project up here or by going to one of my teams and then creating a project. Now, I can use a template if I like, or for this demo, I'm going to just start with a blank project. So first thing I'm going to do is give my project a name. So let's just pretend I'm planning a trade show. So we'll just give my project a name. And then I can choose my default layout for the project. It really doesn't matter what I choose at this stage because we're going to change this later on. Although I would say that personally, I find it easier to input tasks and set up my sections using the list view. I just find that easier to work from. So we'll start with this list view for now. So here's my blank project ready to go. First thing I might do is click this star icon. That's gonna add it to my starred items here so I can get quick access to this project later on. Now, before I set up my Gantt view, the first thing I need to think about or define is how I'm going to use sections within my Gantt view. Now sections, if I go back to my new product launch and if I go to that Gantt view here, sections are these um, sections here. These are typically used as the phases or stages of a project. You can define them however you want, but I think usually for a Gantt view, project stage or phase tends to make the most sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and create some sections. Uh, I'm gonna click up here and add a section. So I'm gonna call the first section stage one, planning. This is where I'm going to put all the tasks related to planning my trade show. I'm then going to click here to add another section. Let's do stage two, uh, design and production, just to get, get everything ready for the, for the event. And then we'll do stage three, uh, event day. And maybe we have a stage four, for um, post event, you know, anything we need to do after the event. So that's the first step. I find using sections for the stage or phase of the project works really well because later on we're going to be able to open and expand or collapse tasks within that phase to see where we're at in the project. Once I'm happy with my sections, I can now go ahead and start to input some tasks. I can do that by clicking the plus button here or by clicking add task. And I'll just skip ahead at this point to set up some tasks within this project. So here we go. I've built out the project a little more and I've added tasks uh, explaining kind of what I need to do for each section of this project. So for planning, I've got confirming the event space, confirming staff, uh, a, a due date for when the contract and deposit needs to be paid. 
And what I might do at this point as well is for important deadlines like this, I can right click on this task and I can mark this as a milestone. Milestones typically represent important deadlines or due dates or really key deliverables within the project. You can see some of these tasks have subtasks. So I can see that here. I've got some subtasks. Uh, I'm also going to go through maybe just put in a couple more deadlines like the event day. That can be a milestone and conducting a post event analysis. That could also be an important milestone as well. You can see I've also started to put some dates on these tasks, including uh, tasks with a date range. I've applied that here and I've started to assign tasks to members of my team. So personally, I've chosen to do all of this in the list view for now. Again, it's personal preference, but I just find it easier working from this list view. Now I'm ready to actually set up my Gantt chart. I'm going to click the plus button at the top and I'm going to add this Gantt view as one of the tabs uh, in my project. And you can see Asana is simply building the project for me. All my tasks are now visible on this left hand side and the tasks are due based on the dates that I've already set in that list view. From here, I can easily drag and drop. I can move things around. So maybe this um, design store layout and branding, maybe I actually need to do that a week later. I can shift that there and it's actually going to reorder the tasks within my project. I can also add due dates or a date range to my subtasks as well. So if I click on this one here, let's say that this one is going to happen. Um, I'm going to start the 13th and it's going to be due on the 15th. And then maybe this one here, I'm going to say is going to start on the uh, 13th and it's going to be due the following week. So you can see my, my subtasks are starting to populate on the Gantt view here as well. Now at this stage, I just want to point out that the due dates of the subtasks are independent of the due dates of the parent task. So to show you what I mean, you can see here's this parent and I've got two subtasks underneath. If I click and drag, maybe this subtask is now taking an additional week. By extending that due date out, I've increased the, the time period for that subtask, but this does not impact my parent task. These dates are independent of one another. So if I need to, I might want to click and drag and expand that as well to show when this task uh, or when this parent task and its subtasks are due by. Now, what you may have noticed when I made that change is that it did update this strip at the top, which represents the time frame for the entire section. So if I make that change again, if I bring this parent back and this subtask, let's bring that back here, you can see that little strip at the top has changed. This is really useful because I can later uh, collapse this section. I can collapse all my sections actually, and I can then see when different sections of tasks start and finish. So I can see stage one planning is occurring during uh, this, this block of time here. And so that just automatically updates based on the due dates of the tasks within that section. Now for tasks that don't yet have a due date, as you've seen me do already, I can click and I can add a date or a date range from this date picker. Or the other option is I can click on my Gantt view. I can click the plus button here where I want my task to start. And then I can just click and drag with my mouse to show and create the date range for that particular task. So for this one here, ordering swag, maybe I'm going to do that uh, during this week. And if I need to, I can even click and expand to open the subtasks. And now I can add the due dates for my subtasks with a couple of quick clicks. You may have also noticed that the milestones like this one here, these are represented with this little diamond and this green line vertically down the screen. This shows me when those important deadlines are due. So I can see that milestone here. I can see other milestones in my project here and down here. So my Gantt chart is looking pretty good now, but let me show you a couple more features that are really gonna take this to the next level. If I hover my mouse on any of these tasks, I can use these little dots, these little handles here to click and drag and I can connect this task with another task. So if I drag this on top and let go, I've now created what's called a dependency. So firstly, this is a visual way of seeing what tasks need to happen first so that other tasks can then be worked on. And if I click on the task, I can see that here, this design store layout and branding is blocked by the confirm event space. So only when this, this task here is completed, can I then work on this next task. And because this task is assigned to Warwick, he will actually get notified 
when this task, which is assigned to me, is completed. Or if I delay my task, if I move that all the way back here, it's going to shift Warwick's dependent task as well. He'll get notified that because my task was changed, his has also been changed. If I continue to build out my project like I have here, you can see I've connected multiple tasks, I've created multiple dependencies. I can see this nice flow of what needs to happen when. If I then open my Gantt options and, and enable the Highlight Critical Path option here, what Asana is going to do is it's going to highlight the longest chain of dependent tasks. So this uh, post uh, event analysis, this, this milestone here, is dependent on the trade show event day here, which is dependent on this task, which is dependent on this. So because that's my longest chain of dependent tasks, that's what we call the critical path or the most important tasks that need to happen so that we can successfully complete this project. Another useful feature within the Gantt view is this option to see a baseline or compare my tasks and when they're due now to a baseline or what my previous project plan was, let's say a week or two ago. Now, I can't actually show you this with this new project because this is brand new. I haven't made any changes yet. But if I go to another project where, if I go to my Gantt view, this project has been going for a while now. I can then look at my click on my baseline options here. And let's say I want to look at how did this project look three weeks ago? I can then see uh, in sort of like this sort of highlighted tasks here when these tasks were due or what was the state of this project on this day. So on November 1st, these tasks were due here. This is my baseline. Now, the current state of the project, you can see there's been lots of delays. The, the tasks are now due much later. This is a really useful way of seeing how much has our initial plan changed from where we are now. So that's a look at how to set up a Gantt chart in Asana. Now, long-time users of Asana may be asking, well, what's the difference between a Gantt chart and the timeline? The timeline feature, this is something we've had in Asana for a while now. And again, it's a very visual way of seeing when tasks in your projects are due. So what's the difference? Firstly, there are a couple of user interface or design differences between the Gantt and Timeline views. With the Gantt view here, you can see I, I can see all of my tasks organized by section on the left-hand side. And in the main Gantt chart, I can see when those tasks are due. If I switch to my Timeline up here, again, I can see very visually when tasks start and finish. I can see all my dependencies. But instead of seeing each task listed out here, the name of the task appears on the task itself in this block. So it's really just a small sort of design change. Personally, I actually quite like this view because I don't have to look at the task when it's due and then move my eyes across the screen and see what task that is. I quite like that it has the task name on that block. In the timeline view, I also have some additional sorting options. For example, I'm just sorting by none at the moment, which is why I can see my tasks organized by section. So very similar to how they're set up in the Gantt view. But with my timeline, I can sort by start date. If I just want to remove the sections, uh, I can organize by start date. And I find this is a very clean, very minimal actually project layout. And I find it can be a bit easier to look at this, but that's just personal preference. I can organize by assignee if I want to. So I can see which tasks are assigned to which members of my team. Whereas with my Gantt view, really I am only able to view my tasks organized by section. So there are some advantages and I have some more options when using the timeline. But one of the disadvantages is if I were to collapse these sections like this, I, don't, I can't see when the tasks in that section are due. And that's one of the really useful things I can do in this Gantt view is I can collapse these sections and I can see at a very sort of high level how long that section or phase of the project is going to take. And these just update automatically as the task deadlines themselves are changed. I also find it a little bit quicker to update task details from this Gantt view. I can just click in one of these rows. I can rename the task. I can easily click on the assignee or the date and I can very quickly make changes. Whereas in the timeline view, I have to click to open the task first before I can make any changes. It's a subtle difference, but it is an additional click that some people may want to avoid. 
your decision on whether to use the timeline or Gantt chart really is up to you. I don't think there's one that's better or worse. As I've pointed out, there's just a couple of subtle differences. And you may find actually that you use the timeline some of the time for looking at your project. You might use the Gantt chart for making bigger changes to the project. It's really up to you. And I am a little intrigued as to why the product team at Asana decided to keep these two features or views separate. I'm sure they have their reasons. I guess I'm thinking, you know, it would be quite nice if I could have sort of the best of both worlds in one view, but I guess Asana have their reasons for doing it the way they have. But I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions about the new Gantt feature in Asana, please leave me a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see when I publish new Asana training videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.